God is good. I re- told Philip as I was uh, walking up, and I, and I kid you not, you'll, you'll see it for yourself in, in just a few moments, but Landon completely preached my sermon in just a few short minutes. So um, in, in what w- is going to take me a little bit longer than two or three minutes, uh, but don't zone out on me, okay? <laughs> Say, uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. All, all right, Landon says. Oh. Oh, it's so good, so good uh, to be in his house and so good. Let me tell you something. When I start talking about uh, the goodness of God and I begin thanking him, there is, and we're going to talk about this in the message tonight, but, but thanking him, thanking him, it's like a cloak of his presence descends on me. And it's every single time that brings me to my knees. And uh, the Lord and I have a good time in my car a lot. Um, I don't listen to the radio. I never have, never been one of of them. But um, uh, so so when it's me uh, just driving down the road, uh, me and him are going somewhere. And I just start thanking him. And instantly his presence fills my car. Thanking God is so, so powerful. That's actually part of the message as well. And uh, I I think maybe from last week, how many of you were here last week? This is kind of going to be piggybacking uh, on on last week's uh, some. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to hear anything new. Um, But I heard this statement, and I believe that this is true. To be mature is to be basic. And we don't lose in life. We, we're not defeated in life uh, because we need a new, great, big revelation. We're, we're defeated and, and we lose in life when we're not grounded in and functioning in the basics. Amen? And so I look, I look at you guys on a Wednesday night, who are coming and, and hungry uh, for, for the word of the Lord and getting grounded more and more every single week. How many of you can say, since you have been faithful in coming to God's house where he's placed you, that you are becoming more and more, just little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, more and more grounded in truth, and your feet established on the good path that he's ordained for you to walk in. Amen. Amen. And so that is, that's the excitement of, of coming into God's house every, every single week uh, for us to get equipped. And, and one of the, my most favorite, any of you that have known me for any length of time know this, my most favorite thing uh, to communicate and to teach on uh, is who we are in Christ, what Christ has done for us. Why is that? Uh, because in knowing that, in walking in that, we can walk in victory. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience heaven. Glory to God. God didn't just send Jesus to the earth so, uh, to get us to heaven. But he sent him to get heaven into us. Man, I say this all the time. Father, thank you. I'm sorry. I've been like this for a long time. And it shouldn't be hormonal. I'm way past hormonal stuff. So, anyway. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you that your plans for us are good and nothing but good. And that we don't have to live our lives in darkness, in despair, in depression, in sickness, in poverty. We don't have to because you gave Jesus for us. Father, I thank you that I don't have to wait until I see you with my eyes to experience all of your life in the here and now. Oh, I'm thankful for that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So uh, so we're going to teach tonight. Is that okay? Thank you, Lord. And, and when I say teach, you know that that means 
Uh, lots of scripture, right? I don't know. I don't know how to communicate good news any other way. I mean, you know, I can't because the gospel is the good news, right? I mean, uh, you know, I'm not a fancy orator. How do you say that? Not a fancy talker. Clear. <laughs> Clearly, Landon said. I did not say it right. Uh, yes. So, I'm not a fancy one of them, you know. And, uh, and the truth is, it, it wouldn't matter if, uh, if I could sing like angels, if I could talk uh, in such an oppressive way that might motivate your flesh for a moment. Right. Nobody's opinion and no great talking changes our hearts. It, uh, and the gospel is good news. That's actually what, uh, what we're going to be talking about. I remember when uh, Pastor Nate first became pastor of... Uh, no, I take that back. He wasn't the pastor yet. He was the youth pastor. And um, how many of you here might have been here for his first sermon behind this pulpit? Yeah, several. Uh, and, uh, and I just remember, you know, and, and he would say, well, I wasn't, uh, you know, all that, uh, all that polished or whatever. And I thought I was just mesmerized. I could just sit and listen forever. Why? Because words of life was coming out of him. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, so we're going to, yeah, we're just going to get in the word. Will you all pray with me? Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus, and, and we're asking you for, for your words uh, for tonight. Um, I thank you, Father, for, for words from heaven, life-giving words that, that penetrate our hearts, that, that cause us to rise up in faith and receive all that you have for us tonight. I thank you, Father, that in this house, this is a household of faith that there is a spirit of faith in this house, that it's easy to receive from you in this house. And so I thank you, Father, that tonight that faith uh, is received and faith is released. Hallelujah. Faith in God is released. And uh, I just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, um, so <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to see what, where to <clears throat> jump in here. Yeah, I'll just start at the top so, so the next few will make sense. So there's three things I put down. Did you know, number one, that God wants you whole? God wants you whole, right? And I said it while ago. God did not send Jesus just to get us to heaven, but he sent Jesus to get heaven into us. Amen. So, so we know that Jesus, Jesus did not just go to the cross in his body. I'm so sorry. That's not what I meant to say. He didn't just go to the cross in his spirit where, where he was made sin with our sin. Do you realize that he went to the cross spirit soul, and body. And he, and he paid for a complete redemption for us. Spirit, soul, and body. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, did you know that by hearing the good news of the gospel, you have the ability to release faith and receive any and everything that you have need of? By hearing the gospel. And when we read in the gospel, all we, Jesus' mission, you read this all through the gospels. He went around preaching, teaching, and healing. Preaching, teaching, and healing. That's what, that's what he did. Amen. And, and so I'll just plug this in right here. Not part of my notes, but Landon, uh, Landon hit on it. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? And there's so many ways that we could, that we could teach on healing and uh, look in the Bible as to why healing 
uh, is God's will. But I'll tell you, the one that, that just sealed it up for me is when the leper came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I know that you can heal me if you are willing. What did Jesus say? I will. So either we believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? Uh, and we believe that, that uh, healing is for all of us today. Or we might as well just throw this book out and say we don't believe it. It's, it, it is. It's very, very clear. I will never understand how anyone can say healing is not for today. It died away when Jesus left the earth. And all I can say is, if that is what you think, you have not read the Bible. Amen. Amen. In Acts, it says that uh, um, Jesus is no respecter of persons. I remember reading this years ago and looking at that, and I said, you said you're willing, you're no respecter of persons. If you healed him, you're healing me. Yeah. There, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. Amen. All right. <clears throat> and w listen, we praise God for the gifts of the Spirit. Hang, hang on here for just a moment. For gifts of healings, how many of you know that's part of the gifts of the Spirit? Gifts of healings, the, uh, the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, right? Gifts of the Spirit. And yet, um, I think we've almost conditioned, uh, Christians have conditioned themselves to believe that they've got to get to a meeting, that they've got to get somewhere, uh, to get into the presence of God, to receive a special anointing. I've got to get to a healing evangelist in order for him to lay uh, his hands on me or her hands on me in order that I can be healed. And you know, that is not, that is not God's best. Praise God that he loves us so much that those things are in operation. But his intent is that we receive healing, that we receive provision, that we receive deliverance one way, and that's through his word. Yeah. Amen. Through releasing faith in his word. Because how many of you know if we're waiting to, oh God, I, I need to get somewhere. I need a touch from you. I need, I need something from you. And if we're banking on getting who knows? Somewhere to get that, we're going to be extremely, extremely frustrated. And chances are we wouldn't even receive then because over and over and over and over in the Gospels, Jesus said, be it done unto you according to your faith. According to your faith. And faith comes by how? He is what? His word. Faith comes by hearing his word, right? So when we come day in and day out, well, not day in and day out. I believe the day's coming where we'll be here every day. But when we come uh, twice a week and we're sitting under the word, do you know you're, you're hearing and having the ability? There is the potential there for you to hear and for you to release faith. To receive without anyone laying hands on you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Through hearing his word and through releasing faith in his word. Amen. Amen. Uh, by believing that you have to get someone or in some special atmosphere to be able to receive from God is a paralyzing, crippling lie. It weakens our faith and it weakens the power of the gospel. So every time, I'm just going to, I just said it, but I'm going to read it in my notes, okay? So every time the word is preached, every time you feed on the word in your private devotion time, you can release faith in that word and receive Glory to God. Um, so say with me. I want you to say this. Today, today. I, will hear the word of God. I will hear the word of God. Today, today. I, will I will release faith. In that word. In that word. 
and it will bring cleansing, correction, correction. Refreshing. refreshing, healing, healing. Provision. provision, peace, peace. And, answers and answers for my life. Amen. Amen. So the gospel, the gospel is good news. Say good news. Good news. Good news. Literally. In the Hebrew, in the Greek, gospel means good news, good tidings, a good message. Um, one of my most favorite verses uh, in the word, John 10:10. 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I came that you may have life in abundance to the full until it overflows. Amen. Life, life, and more life. 1 John 3:8. <clears throat> whenever there is a mark of the devil in my life, death in any form, and what is that? Death in any form. What does the devil come to do? Steal, kill, kill, and destroy. So when I see evidence of that, stealing life, destruction, all right? We know it's the enemy, yes. correct? Yes. And, uh, and we, have to, we have to stand up to it. We have to say no. Come on. No. Uh, and I automatically think uh, of 1 John 3, 8. It's up there. Jesus came to undo, destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works the devil has done. So when the enemy comes and he's offering death and he's offering destruction and he's coming in to steal any part of life in my life, then we have to open our mouth and we have to say something. And, and he's pushy. He's pushy. He, he's pushy with it. But I come back and I say, no, no. The redemption was complete. Jesus not only came to undo the works of the devil, but the works of the devil are undone in my life. Hallelujah. And so we answer it. We answer it. Romans 1.16 in the King James, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it... What is it? The gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. There are a lot of Christians that are ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Um, let me read you the definition of salvation. For uh, the gospel, the power of God unto salvation. Salvation means health, deliverance, preservation, safety, and one of my most favorite, deliverance from the molestation of enemies. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise Glory to God. He's delivered us out of that kingdom out of the kingdom of darkness. He's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Friends, let me tell you, there is no want, there is no lack in the kingdom that you're a part of. There is no sickness, there is no disease, there is no poverty in the kingdom that we belong to as children of God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Many people believe that salvation is only our sins being forgiven and heaven being our eternal destination. That in itself is very good news. Right? That, that our eternal destination is heaven, that, uh, that our sins are forgiven. All right? <clears throat> but that's not all of it. That's not all there is to it. Uh, and... Uh, you know, some people will say that it's the most important thing. You may have, you may have thought this before, and, and you may, may have said this before, that the most important thing is that you're going to heaven. Not necessarily. Just felt all the air being sucked out of the room. For a lost person... The most important thing that we can hear in the gospel is that the good news is that you can be found, that you can be saved. If you're lost, 
That is the good news that you need to hear. If you're already born again, but you're sick in your body, the good news of the gospel is you can be healed. If you're having trouble taking care of your family and paying your bills and doing what's in your heart for the Lord, the good news of the gospel is you don't have to be poor anymore. That's part of the gospel. For, for he, was, he was made poor with our poverty. At the very same time that sickness was laid upon his, his clean, sinless spirit. He was made sin to be sin with our sin. And he removed our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. Amen? Amen. So also did he take every sickness and every disease and he paid uh, the penalty for our sin physically. He took our sickness and disease. Uh, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, 1 Peter 2, 24. And it tells us that by his stripes we were healed. Amen. So when we're sick, that's the good news of the gospel. Amen. It also tells us that he was made poor with our poverty so that he could exchange his wealth and his riches with us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, this is a Keith Moore story here, and he was telling about a man uh, that he said took him to task, and, and, he, and it was a preacher, and he said, well, he said, we don't preach healing in our church. We just preach the gospel. <clears throat> I want you to turn to Acts chapter 14. And I want you to see this. We don't preach healing in our church. We just preach the gospel. So Paul was preaching here. Oh, I already lost my papers. And in verse 7 it says, And there they preach the gospel. Say there. there. They preach the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak. The same heard Paul speak, preach the gospel, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Glory to God. The gospel was being preached, and the man received faith to what? To be healed. Glory to God. Glory to God. Aren't you thankful that our redemption is complete? Aren't you thankful that it's not just, thank you, Father. I'm, I mean, honestly, I would be eternally grateful if all there was that you're going to save me from a devil's hell. And when I leave this earth, I will be with you for eternity. That's a whole lot to be thankful for. That is a whole lot to be thankful for. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you what, he's gooder than we think. And, and we have not exercised faith in his uh, extraordinary goodness and the work of his salvation the way he wants us to. But I'm telling you, in this house and in your lives this year, you are going to walk in the fulfillment of the things of God that you have been standing and believing Him for. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so many voices in the earth. So many voices. And these voices are absolutely meant to bring confusion and make the good news of the gospel complicated. When in fact it isn't complicated at all. Say the gospel, the gospel is, not is not complicated. complicated. That's right. Uh, there's a scripture that Pastor shared a couple of weeks ago. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11.3. And it says, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The simplicity that is in Christ. I want you to write this down. I want you to highlight it. I want you to bold it. 
I want you to put um, 50 exclamation marks after it. God said, that's all I need to know. God said, that's all I need to know. Uh, Genesis 3, <clears throat> I feel like that we've looked at this recently, but let's look at it again. Um, let's see. Genesis 3 and verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living, living creature of the field, which the Lord God had made. And Satan said to the woman, Can it really be that God has said you shall not eat from every tree of the garden? Right there, what do we see? What was Satan after? What God said. Is that right? He, he, he was trying to make it complicated to Eve as to what God said. I'm telling you, his tactics are no different today. The enemy of your soul is after one thing, and that is the word from God. All right. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees of the garden, except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So right here, all Eve, all Eve needed to know was what God said. <clears throat> all, all she had to do when, when the enemy of her soul... Now, now get this. He wasn't standing there with a pitchfork. He, he wasn't there uh, in flesh. He wasn't there being tempted by something that she could see. He was there tempting her with thoughts just like he tempted Jesus in the wilderness and just like he tempts you and I today. Okay? So... So, he, so he's coming and he's questioning, what did, did God really say that? Now, her answer should have been, God said. God said, that's all I need to know. I'm not talking to you about it. I'm not discussing it with you. I'm not going to analyze it. I'm not going to entertain you. Get out of here and shut up. Things may have looked, diff may have looked different on planet Earth had that happened. But the truth is, that's exactly what's happening in our lives today. And our lives will look extremely different if when those thoughts of the enemy coming and questioning God's word to you, if we will address him and say, God said, that's all I need to know. I'm making, I'm making his word the final authority in my life. I'm not talking about this. I'm not acknowledging you. I'm telling you to get out. Amen. 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 God said. Say, God said. God said. That's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. So the second part of this, um, I have, let me see here, four more pages of notes. Y'all good? Okay, we've gone, we've gone through uh, two. <clears throat> living, I'm sorry, one and a half. Living by what God says is called living by faith. Say living by faith. What does the Bible say about living by faith? So we're going to talk about a few things right here. Please know and understand this is not comprehensive. All right? Um, but just believing that what needs to come out will come out. Amen? So faith must have a source. Number one, faith must have a source. We don't have faith just because we say we have faith. Faith in anyone comes from one thing, and that is what they've said to you. Right? At that point, we make a choice as to whether we will have faith in their word. Say, faith is a choice. What we believe is a choice. Amen. We're just, we're just making a decision to believe. But if I'm going to have faith in, in, in something, in somebody, I've got to have a word from them. And, and it is and with God. So it is with God. If we're going to have faith in Him, faith to release our faith, to receive from Him, we have to have His Word. 
And we know that Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We cannot have faith in God. We cannot have faith to be saved, faith to be delivered, faith to be healed, faith for prosperity, faith for our children, faith for our future apart from what God says. So, you know, we talk more and more and more about this. And can you see the the preciousness of God and the message that has been coming forth for the last months and months and months and months about making the Word of God final authority in our lives. Amen? And at the, at the direction of the Lord, Pastor said, we're going to read our Bible. We're going to read our Bible. We're going to read His Word. We're going to do it together. We're cultivating. We're cultivating. We're cultivating a lifestyle of taking His Word, planting in it uh, in our hearts, and having it be final authority in our lives. And the more that we feed on it, and the more that we feed on it, and the more that we feed on it, it becomes a part of us. It becomes stronger and stronger, and it becomes a part of us. And so when the trials and the storms of life come that try to knock us off of our feet, instead of going, oh, have have y'all ever done that? Yeah, I've done it, you know? And uh, and it's, it's awful. It's awful. But when we, when we make it a lifestyle of every single day feeding. You know, I realize that right now in this room, there are people that do not need healing in your body. I get that. But we must be in a habit of feeding on that word every single day so that it is built in us. So that when an attack comes, when uh, the enemy comes knocking, and he always does, that the word of life comes out of us with the force of faith and answers it. Amen. And that is true for our finances. That is true for our children. That is true for our, uh, our destiny, our purpose, our walk in life. Amen. Amen. We don't want to be a people that just turns to God and His Word when we need something. Because many, many times, if that's the way we live our life, then the storms of life absolutely knock us off our feet. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins. How many of y'all have heard that? Faith begins where the will of God is known. And His Word is His... Yeah, be, be strong. His Word is His will. That's right. And so faith begins in us where the will of God is known. How many of y'all have ever tried to be in faith for something that you really were, you weren't confident that it was the will of God? I, I would surely assume all of us, right? But he's so good. He's so good. He's given, his, given us his word uh, to show us his will. Yeah, and so when I read that about the leper, uh, and, and Jesus said, yes, I will. I am willing. Be healed. Be made whole. That's his will. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Would I have ever known that had I not read it in his word? No. Faith is what pleases God. Hebrews eleven six. We're going to have to cook. I feel like I'm cooking. Anybody else? Do I look red? I feel red. No? Great. Awesome. Okay. Faith is what pleases God. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is what pleases God because it pleases him to be able to work on your behalf. It, it displeases him to not be able to work on your behalf. Faith in him is what pleases him. Amen. 
we're saved through faith in him. By grace, by grace, it's his work, by grace, but through faith. Through faith. Woo, thank you, Kyle. We receive everything by faith. Number two, faith, sp- actually, number three, faith speaks. Faith says what God says. 2 Corinthians 4.13 Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. We too believe and therefore we speak. Faith speaks. If we're not talking, if we're not speaking, we are not in faith. Don't delude yourself into thinking that you are in faith and believing God if your tongue is not tied up to the word in your heart. Faith speaks. Faith says something. Romans 4, faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Isaiah 46.10, faith declares the end from the beginning. Think about David and, and Goliath here. Uh, that, that's not the story in Isaiah 46.10. But think of uh, faith declares the end from the beginning. David just stood up to Goliath and he said, this is what's going to happen. I'm, gonna ta- I, I'm going to take you down. I'm paraphrasing here. I didn't look this up. But I am going to kill you. I'm going to cut your head off. Right? I mean, he declared that to him. He declared the end from the beginning. And that's what faith does. Faith declares the end from the beginning. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you, this is how it's going to turn out. For it is written, All my children are taught of the Lord, obedient to his will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oppression is far from them. So no matter what it looks like, if my kids are going wild right now, this is how it's going to turn out. All my children are taught of the Lord. And great is their peace and their undisturbed composure. They're obedient to your will. They're walking on the path that God called them to walk upon. Psalms 91.2, a very familiar uh, verse, but uh, you remember that it says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Faith speaks. You've got to be saying something. You've got to be saying something. And what you've got to be saying is what God says. Is what God says, is what God says. Number four, faith receives or takes what has already been given. Y'all are just, I'm going to get through the majority of this, so y'all are just going to stay with me, right? Amen. Faith receives or takes what has already been given. Second Peter 1 3, it says, His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. So God has already given us everything that we need for life and godliness. Think of John 10.10, of why Jesus came, to give us life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Amen? He's already given it to us. We don't have to beg Him for it. We don't have to earn it. It's a free gift. He's given it to us. Glory to God. Glory to God. But faith receives or takes what has already been given. Landon talked about this um, earlier, but I want us to look at it. The woman with the issue of blood. Can we look at it real fast? One of my most favorite stories. I love this so much. And again, you think in terms of how many, how many times in, in the Gospels that Jesus said, be it done unto you according to your faith. According to your faith. According to your faith. Mark 5, 25. Um, okay, King James, yep. It says, and, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years... And had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, 
uh, in the Amplified, it says, when she had heard the reports concerning Jesus, what is that? Hello? <laughs> when she heard reports of Jesus, what is that? Gospel? She heard the gospel? She heard the truth, right? She heard and faith came. And faith came. She heard the reports of Jesus and faith came. All right. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and she touched his garment. For she said, it, for she what? For she said, faith speaks. Faith speaks. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of uh, the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said unto him, You see the multitude all over you, and you're saying, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. So she heard the good news of the gospel that Jesus is a healer. And she exercised faith in that word. She said something. She got out of the house and did something. She shouldn't have even been out in public. It was against their, uh, their law, right? She didn't go up and ask him to lay his hands on her. She went up and just took her a healing. I love this story. I love it. All because she heard the good news of the gospel... She responded in faith. Her mouth said something. She acted on something. And she just took from him what was already freely given to her. That's faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the next one. If we walk by faith, we cannot walk by sight. If we walk to walk by faith means we do not walk by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. The New Living says, For we live by believing and not by seeing. The Passion says, For we live by faith, not by, by what we see with our eyes. Amen. So I mentioned this scripture last week, Hebrews eleven two, 2, that said, By faith the elders obtained a good report. And, and I had mentioned that, that many times that we, that we have people or we've done it ourselves where we have said, will you please agree with me in prayer? I'm going to the doctor next week. Please believe with me for a good report. So there's nothing really to agree with there. If you understand what I'm saying, what do we need to release our faith in to be healed? We need his word. And if, my, if I'm not going to believe that I am healed until the doctor's report says I'm healed, then I'm living by what I see. You understand? So, so rather than say, Believe with me for a good report. Say, I know that the word says this. I know that the word says that by his stripes I am healed. And uh, I just need some agreement. It's been a battle. It's been a battle. But could you come into agreement? Because that's the only thing we can come into agreement on, what God says. What God says. If I come to you and ask you to, come, to agree with me in prayer about something, and I'm not bringing you a word from God to agree with me on then we're deluding ourselves to think that we're in prayer and we have what we're calling faith failures everywhere. If I'm, going, if, if I'm going to ask you to come into agreement with me about any situation, then I must be bringing you a word from God for us to agree upon. Hallelujah. Does that make sense? <clears throat> We 
we live by faith and not by sight, right? We walk by faith and not by sight. The next one, faith gives thanks. Faith gives thanks. Good faith teachers call thanksgiving the big gun of faith. It's true. The big gun of faith. Anyone can say thank you after the fact. Right? But faith says thank you before it shows up in this natural realm. Faith says thank you before it shows up in this natural realm. Amen. And how can I say thank you for something that I don't have because he's shown me in his word this is what he has freely given me. I'm going to take it right out of that uh, precious hand and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't have to see it with my eyes. That's what faith is. It's not seeing with our eyes. It is believing what he says. And there's times when faith is working in your life and you know you've released your faith and you've got it and you are, you're rejoicing and you're thanking Him for it that truly when it actually shows up and manifests in the natural realm, it's kind of anticlimactic. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you knew it was yours back when you released your faith and received it from Him. Amen. <clears throat> Thanking God is such an enormously powerful way to keep the flow of faith going in your life. I'm going to say that again. Thanking God is such an enormously powerful way to keep the faith, the flow of faith going in your life. Amen. Thank you, Lord, not only for what you have done. But thank you, Lord, for this that you're doing. For this that you're going to do. Amen? First Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Why is that? Because it is what keeps the flow of faith going. Amen. Have you ever noticed, I mean, just have you ever noticed if you've been, if you've been discouraged, if there's been just sort of a, a, a heaviness or, or, or whatever or a discouragement that is trying to set in, that the moment you open your mouth and you start thanking God, that your perspective completely changes from hopelessness and depression to the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And the flow of faith is flowing once again because Jesus said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Amen. I'm going to share one more part. Faith fights. Say faith fights. First Timothy 6.12 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confess the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Listen. Listen to me. <laughs> Just because we're faith people. Just because we believe God's word does not mean we will not have uh, attacks. It doesn't mean that there won't be issues in our lives. Come on. Doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong necessarily. We live in a fallen world, the enemy is at large. The accuser of the brethren, the tempter is at large. We still have flesh to deal with. Amen. Amen. So there will be, there, there, there's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulation. There's going to be things that present itself uh, in, our, in our lives, which is why it's telling us to fight the good fight of faith, to, fight, to lay hold of eternal life. To, to say, God, your word is final authority in my, in my life. 
Amen. Amen. Fight. Fight the good fight of faith. One way we fight the fight of faith is by developing a disciplined mind. Say disciplined mind. By not allowing any and every thought to park and to run around in our minds. And this is, this is our job. This is our job to grow in, to train, uh, to have a disciplined mind. This is something that, uh, uh, you know, you've heard Brother Hagen said. We, we can't control the birds flying over our head, but we can control whether they park and build a nest on top of it or not, right? So, so it's not you say, golly, where did that thought come from? What kind of Christian am I? So we don't have control of the thoughts that are piercing our minds from the enemy, but we do have a responsibility to answer it and to not toy with it in, uh, in our minds and turn it around and turn it over and turn it over. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we walk in a natural body right now, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. If we are going to live a victorious, overcoming life, we will have to be such students of and feeders of the Word of God and develop in what is called having a disciplined mind. Amen. Um, uh, Brother Keith said that uh, a gentleman came up to him after one of his services, and he says, I've got it, Brother Keith. I've got it. It's like, it's, it's like the door to your mind needs a bouncer. He, he said, you know, he kind of revealed maybe some of his background there. Uh, but that's true. The door of our mind needs a bouncer. You check it, that thought does that line up with the Word of God? No, it doesn't. You're not coming in. Amen. Amen. So a disciplined mind. <clears throat> and then we have need of patience. We have need of patience. So we're so often tempted um, to give up. To give up on this fight of faith. We're so often tempted to give up, to quit fighting the good fight of faith. Hebrews 10, 36 says, and we know that uh, patience is what? It's a fruit of the Spirit. The, and, and on the inside of us, patience is a fruit of the Spirit. It's not in our flesh trying to eke out something. Self-control, patience, is a fruit of the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised. Glory to God. Glory to God. I heard this statement uh, not too long ago, and man, it just so bears witness. Inconsistency lies power. In in the act of consistency lies power. Isn't that true? In, in the act of, of consistency, of the constant fellowshipping with the Lord, uh, of, of feeding on His life-giving Word, of giving thanks, of, 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 of training ourselves and developing in a disciplined mind, in, cons in the act of consistency lies power. Amen. Say this with me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Amen. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I encourage you, if you, don't, if you don't do this already, that you, that you take the words that the Lord is, that is speaking to you, that the promises of God that He has revealed unto you, and you make them a personal confession. 
Do you know what I mean by that? You, you, make, them a, you make them in first person. You make it a, fir, a, a personal confession over you, over your family, uh, over, this, over this body, right? And, and we're consistent in that. We're, we're feeding on that. We're building that reality into us. And you know what happens? We have a quick answer when something other than life, life, and more life comes knocking in our lives. Amen? Amen? Just close your eyes. I want, I'm going to read some of the confessions personally that I have. Um, personally that I do. And I want, to, I want to read this, and I want to declare this over you. All right? We, in every single one of these, I'm not giving the Scripture references, but every single one of them is Scripture. All right? My children and my grandchildren are taught of the Lord, obedient to His will. And great is their peace and their undisturbed composure. They are established in righteousness. Oppression is far from them, for they shall not fear. We are increased more and more. When I say this, just say we, okay? We are increased more and more, spirit, soul, and body, relationally, financially, influentially, us and our children. We're filled with the love of God the wisdom of God and the fire of God, souls that are at rest and flourishing in peace and understanding, bodies that are full of the life of God, healthy and strong, relationships that are strong, loving, kind, forgiving and flourishing, increased wealth and uh, for wealth and riches are in our house and our righteousness endures forever, ever able and ever ready to be a blessing to those around us and to give abundantly to every good work. We are kingdom carriers in our generation. No plague, no pestilence, no evil, no destruction comes near our dwelling. With long life, God satisfies us and he shows us his salvation. All grace abounds to us and we have all sufficiency in all things and we do abound unto every good work. We are living memorials in the earth to show that the Lord is upright and faithful to his promises. With a heart to serve the Lord all the days of our lives, our feet are firmly established on the preordained path God created for each of us to walk on. We lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Weapons may be formed, but no weapon formed against us prospers. It's impossible for a weapon to succeed against the blood of Jesus that covers us. The blood that saves, that keeps, that heals, that preserves, that protects, that delivers and brings life to us now in the presence of our enemies and throughout all of eternity. There is no lack in our household because the Lord is our shepherd. There is no depression or hopelessness in our household because we know and are convinced we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Father, we honor you tonight. We thank you for your life-giving word. Every word that was spoken, Lord, every good and precious promise, I declare over these people tonight that no hopelessness, no helplessness overtakes them. For they are convinced that in this life they will see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you that the precious blood of Jesus covers them. Covers their household. Covers their children. And covers their grandchildren. And that, that there is no evil. There is no plague. There is no pestilence. There is no destruction that comes from them. Uh, comes near them. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, that you give your angels charge over them to keep them in all of their ways. And with long life, you do satisfy them and you do show them your salvation. We thank you for it, Father. We, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for the greatness of your goodness. We honor you in your house tonight. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.